Uh, I'm doing fine. I'm all right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Hyper is dead <laughs> regarding that. <laughs> I didn't even know Hyper existed until I heard about Hyperland. What? So how long had Hyper been around for? Did it really have any sort of user base or was it just one of these like little window managers that like, you know, a couple of people knew about? Oh, I made Hyper like a long time ago. I think it was December 2021 even. Mm -hmm. um, I just made it because I was... Well, I pr primarily I started my Linux journey on KDE, and I have been mm -hmm. KDE for a while. Then I switched to i3 because one of my friends was pressuring me to switch to i3 or else yep. they will kidnap me or something. <laughs> yep. Um, and and so I switched to i3, uh, but I hated i3. It was it was terrible. It was garbage. I, I like the tiling. Tyler. I like the tiling. I installed oh. a script for auto, auto tiling. Right. Okay. Yeah. But. Yeah. It just had so many quirks and annoyances. Mm -hmm. Like, I just remember moving windows around was so unpredictable that it was it was literally painful. Like, I wanted to move a window to the left mm -hmm. and it would randomly go to the bottom, to the top left, to, to the right even sometimes. And it was so annoying that I was just mm -hmm. like, what if I write my own? And that was a big mistake because that by the snow snowball effect cascaded now into me developing software for tens of thousands of people um yeah but so hyper in the beginning i i got a bit of a user base it, it wasn't a lot of people but mm -hmm. it was honestly more like just a window manager for me just mm -hmm. to like to fit that niche use case that I wanted it to be like kind of. I didn't know about BSPWM, and it was mostly BSPWM to be honest. Right. I was gonna ask um, but you it was, why. Like, what but was, it was mine. Mm -hmm, yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask you what was like different about Hyper that sort of made it stand out from the rest of the dynamic tilers out there, because there's a lot of them. The the real thing that made it stand out was the fact that the window manager, not the compositor, supported animations and rounded corners. So right. you didn't have to have Pycom for those, which was pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, but the animations were kind of laggy because, well, Xorg plus it's the window manager doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Which it shouldn't be. And uh, it, and Pycom had some issues. Like, for example, during animations, the shadow wouldn't update. So it looked kind of weird. <laughs> Yo. Um, uh, but generally Hyper amassed like 600 or something stars. So I wouldn't say it, it was like a completely underground project, but it mm -hmm. definitely wasn't a, a, a big one. Yeah. I posted like my workflow like once, twice or thrice to, um, to Unix born mm -hmm. and, and it got, it got a bit of traction and that actually smoothly translates to me and Hyperland because yeah these I remember, screenshots are definitely unix porn screenshots wow <laughs> either either the first or the second post that i made on unix porn yep got like like one and a half thousand upvotes which is like oh a bunch wow um and oh, almost every single one of my posts onto unix porn got like over 1000 upvotes <laughs> <laughs> but um I either first or the second, uh, there was this one guy that made a comment mm -hmm. basically using a lot of expletives and a generally unnice terminology yep. uh, to describe me and uh, me making something for X, which he thought was bad, old, deprecated. Why are you using this? Oh my God, you're stupid. <laughs> and. Yep. He got downvoted into oblivion. He later deleted his comment, but I probably still have a screenshot somewhere. I mean, I, I hope I do, because it was really funny. Because mm. um, uh, uh, cause, uh, basically, um, I, I, I replied with none of your effing business, because he was using so many expletives that I just replied, I would say none of your effing business, but I'm not that rude. Mm -hmm. um, and um, basically, that was kind of like that that moment that I actually learned about Wayland, because... Oh, well, you didn't even was, know about it was, up until that point. No, I was... When I made Hyper in December, uh -huh. I've been I've been using Linux for, like, four months, or, like, oh, five. Wow, okay. I've been a very new Linux user. I, I started using Linux in May 2021, mm -hmm. which... And then December 2021, I started Hyper. So it, I was using KD for, like, three months, maybe. Wait, so what distro um, did you start on? I started, well, I wanted to start on Endeavor, yep. but 
at the time, I had an NVIDIA graphics card. Ah, okay. Great. And I actually started <laughs> using Linux when NVIDIA drivers were causing kernel panics on all, almost all cards before the 20 series. Right. So I, I started Endeavor, it loaded, then I clicked like install, it installed, and I clicked install NVIDIA drivers, and it would not boot again. Then I tried a fresh <laughs> install, the installer would not boot, uh -huh. and I was like, Jesus Christ, what's wrong? And I remember having two Linux friends trying to help me, both failed, and they were just like, just like, okay, just, just, uh, try, try a different distro, and one of my friends started on Manjaro, and he said, just, just try Manjaro. And Manjaro worked because their NVIDIA uh, kernel, uh, kernel driver mm -hmm. was older. <laughs> Because wow, they haven't what? pushed the new release yet, <laughs> so it works, and then a week later it broke. Mm. But <laughs> then I just knew that it was NVIDIA, and I downgraded NVIDIA and held it. It was fine. So I started in Manjaro, but yes. it was super annoying, and so I switched to just plain Arch, like, okay, okay. two months later. So you've been using Arch now for, like, two or so years? Yeah, basically. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an Arch Linux user, by the way. Absolutely, yeah. The only correct answer. And, um, and so... So, yeah, the person telling so, you to unalive yourself about Wayland. Yeah, then I, I knew, I, I learned about Wayland. I was like, hey, that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And I just replied that, you know, uh, the, the Wayland manager is made in a pretty modular fashion, so if I want to migrate to Wayland, mm -hmm. I, I can do that in the future, mm -hmm. whatever. Um, just kind of brushed it off, but kept it in, in at the back of my hand, head, because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, maybe, maybe something. Um... Then I remember, uh, like, like two months later, I was like, "Hey, let's 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 try out this this Wayland thing." And I was like, "I I, I can see a couple like Wayland compositors, like DWL, like Vivarium, like Sway, at the time." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah, Nvidia is gonna be a problem because I still had an Nvidia card." Right. And I tried to launch them on my X11 session because apparently I knew I I the people told me that it should launch in a window, which it should. <laughs> should. But on Nvidia. It, it won't because I didn't apply the the kernel pad parameters and the patches and what whatnot and config options, so it mm. just didn't work. So I was like, whatever, I'll just hold it off for a moment. But then 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 a, a, a lamp, a, a, a small little light popped mm. out of my head, and I was like, it's the height of the GPU shortage. What if I just buy an AMD GPU? Mm -hmm. That was a mistake. Um, <laughs> But How much had a, extra did you pay than you should have paid? I don't want to admit, but um, I I had an NVIDIA 1080 Ti, right. which I bought used, and I sold it used for more money than I bought it for. Yup, so, yup. And, and, and then, with that money, I mean, kind of backwards, uh, I bought an AMD, a Red Devil RX 6700 XT, which is still sitting in my computer, which is a way too powerful card for my uses because I play Counter Strike and you play it like and apart from that, like yes. like turn based strategy games from fifteen years ago. <laughs> no cap fifteen years ago. Mm -hmm. Um so this card is definitely overkill for me, but at least it, it will it will stick it for a while. Yeah, just don't upgrade the, for a while now. The, I bought it for over a thousand US, so uh, uh, yeah. Oh, um, God, yep. But the 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 thing is, I bought it used. So I I uh I asked my dad to drive me to the guy. Wait, uh, I'm sorry. Hold, hold up a sec. You bought it used for over a thousand US. Around a thousand. Yeah, yeah. Jesus. Oh, I forgot how bad it was. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. The 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 exchange rate. Then was a bit was a bit yeah. well. Now it would probably be less US because mm -hmm. the exchange rate of the currency, Polish currency. Uh, but I uh, I asked my dad to drive me to the guy, and we went there, and it was just his house, and it, the card was used in a in a crypto miner. Of so it was, yep. when when I went to the guy, the guy went out with uh, with the card. I had the cash, and he was just like, "Oh yeah, hell yeah!" So. What are you buying it for? You're gonna mine Ethereum or something? I was just like, nah, I just hate Nvidia. <laughs> and he just he just looked at me dead in the eyes. I was just like, what? All right, just take the card. <laughs> I just gave him the money. He didn't want to talk to me because when I said I just hate Nvidia, he was like, what the fuck? <laughs> what? <laughs> 
what? So yeah, he was very confused. He looked at me like like I was like I was the spawn of Satan or something, just yeah, coming here for his card. That's not a, the kind of person who plays a video game. All they see is how many. How how much crypto can I mine per hour? What is the optimal card to buy? Yeah, but yeah, but he asked me like like, am I gonna do heavy gaming as well? And I said, nah. <laughs> oh. I, I, I just hate Nvidia. <laughs> she was like, okay, brother. <laughs> sure. Okay. Um. Yeah. So, so I bought the card. I I I got it to my home. I installed it in my PC. And of course, the first thing I had to do was sit for two hours and remove all the NVIDIA things that apparently there were a lot uh, yep. because my drivers wouldn't work if I had NVIDIA modules mm. installed. Right. Then yeah. normal people, when they get a new GPU, they like launch Cyberpunk or something to just test the frame rates or whatever. What I did was I opened VS Code and I made a new project called it Hyperland. Um, I, I didn't even, I didn't even use the graphics card, like, per se, mm -hmm. like, up until, like, a week later, when I actually played some CSGO on it, and I was like, oh, she, <laughs> this thing actually is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't know how you so notice I, the difference with, if you're playing CSGO with a 1080 versus 6700 X, like, you're gonna be getting did, so many frames anyway. No, 1080 Ti was actually noticeably worse than, really? than oh, 6700 okay. XT. Yeah. Maybe because I, I I had maybe because 1080 Ti was the bottleneck. I don't know. Ah, um, yeah, sure. Something. But but like I made Hyperland. It was like the beginning of March, 2022. Because mm -hmm. it was like I think the 14th or 13th. Because we had we had an uh, one year anniversary like a couple of days ago. Oh wow! Uh, <laughs> of, of Hyperland. Um, because it started yeah it started in March 2022 mm -hmm. and. It was a mess in the beginning. Yep. It, I, I, uh, well, I learned a lot of things from building Hyper, and I'm, I'm, I'm really glad that I did make Hyper before Hyperland, mm -hmm. because it outlined a lot of flaws in my, in my thinking mm -hmm. about such a piece of software. I made a lot of mistakes in Hyper that I just wanted to rectify from the beginning in Hyperland, just to never have them again. Mm -hmm. For example, one of the mega painful things in Hyper was the fact that layouts were not a separate thing from the window manager. Layouts were baked into the logic. So oh, already okay. with two layouts in Hyper, just Dwindle and Master, it was a spaghetti of an absolute mess. It was like terrible, like changing anything. Like the, the, the code for adding a new window, like 90% of it was just layout related stuff. Oh, and okay. in the middle, there was like other logic and it was just super painful to work with. So mm -hmm. like in Hyperland from the beginning, I split layouts into like separate things, into yep. like separate modules that, that are just work independently of the entire window manager mm -hmm, mm -hmm. part and like, so you have the like the window manager part and you have the, the compositor parts so mm -hmm. you kind of you just interact with each other but are separate so you basically can make a new layout by creating two new files and just writing code for the window manager 